Hi everyone, so today is my day off and I have today and tomorrow off usually and then I'll be going into my new campaign and I'm gonna miss working at home. <laughs> I liked working at home so much uh, because I have my computer just to the, the right of me here and I have Bono's picture in front of me and Elvis's picture behind me and my little my little place over there where I have some of my holy pictures. So it makes a difference um, to your psyche. It makes a difference to how you work. It, it's a different environment. And um, I was hoping by now I could have moved out of the call center and moved into something more administrative in the company or outside of teleperformance. I must be the only person <laughs> at teleperformance that can't get another job outside of the working on the floor after five years. Um, so they say it's your faith. <laughs> For me, it's not my faith. So anyway, um, people think that it's easy, but it's not easy. And I think in life, you should be happy with the person you've become. And unfortunately for me, I am not happy with the person I've become. I, I hate this culture that I'm living in where I'm not in control. I be told to just do my job. When I push back, they don't want to hear it. It's not the way I grew up. So maybe that's why I go into the one campaign and do the work that I do, because that's where I can use my voice, where I can say how I truly feel and what I truly want and what I truly believe, instead of pretending to be somebody that I'm not. And um, I know that the family set up these calls to listen to me and I hope it hurt them as much as it hurt me because I didn't deserve to be tracked and followed. I didn't deserve for those calls to be put through and I didn't deserve to be hurt by them the way that I was. It's not a loving relationship when you have somebody tracked and followed and then you say, oh, I was worried about them. Like if you need to get psychological help, if you need to go for counseling or if you need to get some support, don't take it out on the innocent one. Don't take it out on the person that deserves it the least. It's the same thing that used to happen in childhood and I learned with my mother. I don't say anything because it. after a long, long time, she'll tell me you didn't do anything. It was the same thing when I was growing up. My sister used to make the mistake, I used to get the hiding because I used to fight back. So I just don't say anything anymore. When I ask them for help, I wait very patiently until they can help me. If they can't help me and they tell me, we don't know what you're going to do, we don't know where you're going to land up, I just leave them now. It used to hurt me because for me, from the Bible perspective, as family, we have a responsibility to each other and we're supposed to help each other, especially like with my dad dying when we were young. It's to me, it's my uncle's responsibility to make sure I don't land up on the street, to make sure I don't land up on welfare, but they don't see it that way. So I just leave it now. And they've got high powered friends. I don't have high powered friends. I didn't teach with Justin Trudeau's uncle. I don't go and party at Justin Trudeau's house. So I live within knowing what my limitations are. And I live within knowing that I'm a nobody in Canada. There's a few people that know me at the church. I've told them I'm looking for administration work, for executive assistance work. There's a few people in John Maxwell that have reached out to me to say that if they hear of anything in executive assistance, they'll let me know. So that's good. but. I mean, the thing is that when I left TD, they wanted me to go back to supporting Teresa Bowman. And I said, no. And they said, why? I said, no, because I do what I want. I run Jean's, Jean de Garnier's department. He doesn't tell me what to do. I do it. I control everything from the start of planning an event to going to the off sites, to being included at his leadership meetings. I control it. I said, well, Teresa, she pushes back 
If I tell her something, she says, oh, to me, that's an attitude of, of entitlement. To me, that's this. To me, that's that. So when I stopped working with her, I didn't want to go back to working with her. I didn't want to leave her at first. But then once I started working with Chanda Ganye, I didn't want to go back to her. So, you know, that that's the executive assistant role. And everybody is different. So I just have to take it one day at a time and see how it goes. Like yesterday, my ears, you can see the inflammation's gone down. I don't know if you can see my throat, but you can see when my ears get inflamed, it flares up here and you can see I have like a triple chin. I used my essential oils yesterday. I used the lavender and the bergamot. And I just use ordinary cooking oil. Even the oil you get from St. Joseph's Oratory, it's cooking oil. It's not anything fancy. They bless it and it's with your faith that the healing comes. So I used bergamot and lavender yesterday and I did a full body massage and I especially put the oils here behind my ears there's a there's a bone here that's connected to your ears that helps so once those oils get absorbed they go into your spine and they change your physiology and so for me that's what helps me now I'll be going back into the office it's going to be an adjustment and it's going to be a long day for me but I don't have a choice and this is not my country. It's my country, yes, in the sense that I'm a citizen of Canada, but it's not my country. Like I wouldn't be myself here like I would be in Zimbabwe. So that's the way it goes. I really don't know how Zimbabwe manages after all these years of sanctions and hardship and the Americans hurting them. I don't know how they manage. Because for me, I changed. Uh, because they coordinated it through my uncle in California and my uncle in Prospect. I changed. And I don't have that same love for them anymore that I used to have. And they don't have that same love for me. Because I have not lived up to their expectations of what they think I should be and how they think I should live. And they don't accept me for who I am. So... You know, if you look at how I dress even, <laughs> this is not me. I dress like this because of how Canada is. I mean, I, even when I was growing up, I always wore the latest fashions, my jeans with their bell bottoms. I, I like my, you know, dresses where I can have them off the shoulder. I like to dress up. And even if you look at the Zimbabweans, if you look at how we organize our events, how we do things, You'll see the difference between there and here. I don't tell them anymore because they don't want to learn. They don't want to listen. And if I tell them, they give me warnings and they say, if you do it again, we're going to remove you from the company and we're not even going to pay you a severance. I'm like, fine, what's the point? Just do whatever they tell you and get your income and go home. They're not interested. And then they have all these campaigns where they show they have the suggestion boxes for UNICEF for the children in Zimbabwe. They don't want our suggestions here, but they want them there from the kids in Zimbabwe. So it's an interesting thing. But anyway, my, oh, my aunt told me, if you get a job with the Zimbabwe government, you should take it. I said, yeah, I'll take it. Why not? Why not? I'm not, it's not like I'm earning big money here or it's not like I'm appreciated and valued. It's not like I'm being headhunted. So why not? And the African leaders don't see the point of remaining faithful to the West because they're not getting the support. I mean, we might be doing small pieces here and there to help like with health, with education. They're going to take the support from the Arab nations and they're going to hurt their own people, just like they're hurting them now. Except it will be worse. It will be like how I went. I couldn't get any work. So I went to work in the call center in minimum wage with all my skills and education and qualifications and everyone speaking so well of me. I still couldn't get any work. That's what's going to happen to the Zimbabweans. 
the Arabs are going to go in, just like they did with COP28. They're going to buy the what they want, like they did with the World Cup. And they're going to introduce slavery. It's happening all over the world. So, And you think the church will say, oh no, we don't want that. They won't. They'll benefit from it. They'll buy the lands, they'll buy the properties, and they'll say, oh, you know, believe in Christ, believe in freedom, but what kind of freedom are they talking about? It's a hypocrisy. It's a hypocrisy because all these Jesuits that I trained with, the, the, they were the best of the best, and they know what's happening. Scott Lewis gives lectures on what's happening on the beheadings and how the Muslim culture is taking over. And it's not just in Canada, it's taking over in other parts of the world. So, I mean, for me, <laughs> you know, in life you must be happy with the person you've become. And I don't like the person I be, I'm becoming, but at the same time, like Joe said, my friend Joe Orak, who took me into the Maxwell team, you have to change in order to live. So, do you think I like going to work when I'm sick, when my ears are inflamed, when I have a triple chin, when I've got cramps in my stomach? It's only when it gets debilitating that I call off work. Other than that, I go, because no one's got any money. Whatever money I had from the sale of my home, it's gone. You can't expect it to last five years. Obviously, it's going to be gone. If your rent is over 2000 a month, and that's the, the minimum that you're going to get in Toronto. Well, what do you expect? I mean, it's ridiculous. And there's people are coming in and they're going back to their countries. They're going back to India and Dubai and all these places. Even my cousin told me who came here from Dubai. He said, if we get a chance, we're waiting for a few years, but if we get a chance, we're going back to Dubai. I said, if you go, then take me. Remember me, I'm also looking for an executive assistant role. He said, no problem. Because I don't want to go there by myself because I don't know anybody there because I've heard horror stories about how the Arabs are. And it's not only the Arabs. I mean, there's documentaries on YouTube about how the blacks are taking, the black men are taking black women from Zimbabwe and they're putting them into prostitution in India. Because there's no work so what what are you supposed to do if you can't if you're as highly qualified as me and as skilled as me and you can't get into an executive assistant position what are you supposed to do you stay in that job you take the abuse you say sorry for things that are not your fault and where you see where things could be improved you don't speak up you just leave it and you carry on because that's what they want that's how I do it now. So, you know, I, I've learned a lot from watching Elvis Presley. I don't know how those videos started coming through, but he saved my life because I learned from him. You ask my operations manager, Golfo Gikas, she'll tell you she's the best there is. I learned it from him. I learned it all from him. He was the best there was for a reason. And people don't see it. That's not my fault. He knew how to work the audience. He knew how to be himself. He knew how to keep his faith. And at the end of his life, he also knew you don't take it with you when you go. So my ears are still blocked today. But by the time I go back to work, they'll be unblocked. My triple chin will be back to normal. It's all part of the stress. That's how it goes. Welcome to the dream, the American dream.